Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Genesis chapter 13. And with scripture, with scripture, we're going to learn a story. You can't read the Bible, open up the Bible, and, okay, I'm going to read these two, three chapters. you got to read from Genesis to Revelation to get the full story. And Abram went up out of Egypt. Chapter 12, verse 19, 20. He was forced out of Egypt by the Egyptians for his life. He and his wife. Notice how God put that in there. He and his wife. Isn't God great? Doesn't God just remind you of our, you know, what we do wrong? Galatians 6, 7. And all that he had. And lot with him. Into the south. Now one thing too that God's reminding Abraham. Old Testament people of their sins. Because they're not washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. They're through there. That's why when an Old Testament person dies. He goes off to Abraham's bosom. Waiting for the redemption, wait, waiting for the finish of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And at that point, do their sins become clean and washed. And lot with him. That's trouble. Because we see in chapter 12, verse 1, you get out from your country and from your kindred and from your father's house. Chapter 12, verse 8, Abram builds an altar. He calls upon God and he gets no answer. Why? We'll find out. And Abram was very rich in cattle and silver and gold. Let's run back down to verse 16 of chapter 12. And he, Pharaoh, entreated Abram well for his sake, Sarai's. He had sheep, oxen, and asses, and men servants, and maid servants, and she asses, and camel. He got rich off the lie. And he went on his journeys from the south even to Bethel, unto the place where his tent had been at the beginning between Bethel and Hai, chapter 12, verse 8. Where he built the altar, he calls upon God, God doesn't answer, God gives him a famine. And he runs down to Egypt. Unto the place of the altar which he had made there at the first. So there's the broken down weed color covered altar. And there Abram called on the name of the Lord. And Lot also no answer the second time. There's a problem in Abram's life. God spoke to him. He said, you walk through this land. I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to bless everyone that blesses you. I am going to curse everyone that curses you. And now he's not speaking to Abram. There's trouble. And Lot also, which went with Abram, chapter 12, verse 4. So Abram departed. The Lord has spoken unto him. And Lot went with him. It's not what he's supposed to do. Chapter 12, verse 1. Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house. Lot went also. Lot went with him. It says, Lot also, which went with Abram. In chapter 12, verse 4, Lot went with him. Holy Spirit points that out. And the land was not able to bear them, and they might dwell together. 
and their substance was so great, it was great, excuse me, so that they could not dwell together. Lot's cattle, sheep, animals, Abram's sheep, camels, animals. It's not enough food. It's not enough vegetation. And there was a strife between the herd men of Adam's cattle. Now it's a cattle problem. Abram's kid, cattle. And the herd men of Lot's cattle. You are cowboys are fighting for the water hole in the ranch. That's where you get cowboy movies from. You get it from Abram and from Lot. It's not enough water. It's not enough food. They're duking it out. There is strife. And God caused this strife. We're going to see later on in this chapter. God is allowing this battle between uncle and nephew and nephew and uncle. God is doing that. He already caused a famine to waken Abram's eyes. That didn't work. So now he's causing a family feud between Abram and Lot. We don't know if the herdmen are related anyway. But there's a battle. And the parasite dwelt then. Go back to 12.6. You'll see the, you'll see the same thing in 12.6. They're not supposed to be there. These are the children of Ham. Now I'm not prejudiced. But they got their own continent. So the Canaanite and the Parasite, and this is Abram. Abram said unto Lot, let there be no strife. These people are watching this Lot. And it's not right that we be like this. We are causing so much anxiety in this family. And we're supposed to be of God, this new God that the world is seeing. That has been revealed to me. And we don't have a good testimony. Let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, and between my herdmen and thy herdmen, for we be brethren. So evidently, not only is the cowboys and the cowboys fighting each other, it looks like what Abraham said, it looks like Abram and Lot are having a problem getting together now. And this is God's doing. Because God has a means for Abram. Is not the whole land before thee, I would think. Thee? Is it? It's all there. It's a wide stretch land. Why are we battling out on this little ranch here? Separate thyself. Oh, there. Separation. Bible doctrine. Chapter 12, verse, okay, uh, chapter 12, verse 1. From thy kindred and from thy father's house, I pray thee, for from me, if thou wilt take the left hand, if you go to the left, I'll go to the right. If thou, if thou depart to the right hand, I will go to the left. There are a fork in the road. Lot, you choose which way you go. I'm not going to tell you what to go, but what way you go, I'll go opposite. Abram, you know, he's a, he, he's smart. He's not a dictator. Choose what you will. I assume maybe he's relying on God, but God is now in control. Because where Lot goes would have been a mess if Abraham had gone that way. Lot's life is messed up by the decision he's going to make in chapter 13. What if he would have stayed where God told Abram, go? Now, we may not have found out about Lot, but we learn in the Bible that Lot is just. But he's not supposed to be with Abram. And his life gets ruined. It may not have been as so if he had stayed where God told him to stay. And that's interesting. 
And Lot lifted up his eyes, the lust of the eyes. There's Satan. Satan is using one of his three tools in the toolbox. Lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Lot, well, okay, he's using his eyeballs. He should have went and found some people that lived in the area and say, hey, what's the best land for my cattle? What's the best place we can go? There's no council. It's eyeballs. And beheld all the plain of Jordan, the Jordan River, that it was well watered everywhere. You have seen the pictures of this area today? It's desert. That holy city that we speak about today is nothing like what it was in the Old Testament. Before the children of Israel and the children of Judah sinned against God massively. America's beautiful. But she's following the root of Judah and the children of Israel. And there will be judgment. And there will be destruction. But look at it now. It is so beautiful. Before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. That's interesting because Lot is going to be involved in that later on. But before Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed, it was a beautiful place. It was green. Like America tries to be green. Even as the garden of the Lord. Full of trees, full of herbs, full of light. That was the Garden of Eden. Like the land of Egypt. Going to this land of Egypt is beautiful. It's not. It's like the Garden of Lord. You see what that? You ever see the picture of those those three uh, pyramids and that that uh, Sphinx? You look at those pictures. We're all around. It's all sand. It's all dust. Because they went against Israel, they cursed Israel, they made them bond servants, and God said, Hey, I gotta curse you. And that place has been cursed. Then Lot chose him all the plain of Jordan. And Lot journeyed east. And they separated themselves from one uh, from the one from the other. Alright, Lot leaves. Bye bye, Adam. I mean I don't know. Bye bye Abram, I'm going over there. And Abram dwelt in the land of Cana, Palestine. And Lot dwelt in the cities of the plain, and pitched his tent toward, that means near or next to, Sodom. Wait till you find out where, where Lot is in chapter 14. He's living not in Sodom here. But before you get to Sodom, on the way to Sodom. If you were to travel to Sodom on this road, you would see Lot and his family. And you continue further into Sodom, you wouldn't find Lot and his family. He's not in Sodom in chapter 13, uh, chapter 12, 13, 13. But the men of Sodom were wicked, 13, 13. This is the 13, first 13, 13 in your Bible. But the men of Sodom were wicked. Look at that verse. 13, your Bible sets forth as rebellion. And people of superstitions hold 13 as bad. Where did they get that from? They got it from God in the Bible. Wicked and sinners. Before the Lord exceedingly. So Lot takes off. God gives us a little preview about Sodom and Gomorrah. And then, the Lord said unto Abram, There's, there was a trouble. Lot was. And I'm going to tell you, if God is not speaking to you in your life, you may have to separate from something. And it's a noun. It may be a person, it may be a place, or it may be a thing. Something that God has told you, hey, I don't want it with you. Leave it. He said, place, person, or thing. It's a noun. 
You got to leave it. If you don't, there's no fellowship with God because you got the curse of sin. When Joshua went into the battle of Ai, they lost. The only war that Joshua lost, because somebody had three things that they weren't supposed to have. And when you come out with, with Achan, when you count out how many people died because of three things, the garment, the gold, and the silver. And when God tells you, you take that cursed thing or person or place, you get rid of it. You leave it behind. You better be well that God means it. There are illustrations in the Bible. And there was no answer from God by to Abram until Lot left. And Lot was a just man. After Lot, after that Lot, which separated from him, as soon as Lot left, God, the guy says, "Hi, Abram." Well, Lord, where have you been? Uh, I know they didn't have chapter verse, but chapter twelve, verse one. Remember what I told you, Abram? It wasn't me that left you. You left me. You did not adhere to my word. When he told Abram, now the Lord said, now the Lord said, now the Lord had said unto Abram, get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land I will show thee. Alright? Lot went with him. He went into the land, and he left the land. That is disobeying the word of God as much as Adam and Eve disobeyed the word of God when they said, don't eat that fruit. We don't have a problem with, with obeying the word of God. We have a problem disobeying the word of God. And when we disobey the word of God, then we're in trouble. And we all do it. Every day. Lift up thy eyes and look from the place where thou art between Bethel and, uh, what was the other place? In Bethel and Hai. So where he is in Bethel and Hai? Now, this is remarkable. Just watch. Look from the place where thou art northward, southward, and eastward, and westward. For all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it, and to, the, to thy seed forever now when you match this when Moses is about to die God says no you're not going in that land but look east west south and see the land you realize what has happened to Abraham and to Moses God has given them actually it's not even periscope God has given that ability long before technology for Abraham. And when he says, look north, west, south, and east, he is, seen in, he is seeing the entire land just like Moses did. That's remarkable. And the man's an old man. And he's going to start losing his vision like Isaac lost his vision. And he says, I will give it to thy seed forever. Take that verse right there, verse 15 of, of chapter 13, and nail it and, and pin it upon whatever, decal it on every window of the United Nations in New York City. On the, outterior, on the, on the exterior of that building and every window on the interior of that building. You put that verse there to remind them that land is no one's land but Israel's land. Abraham. Now, right now, Abram. But we're going to move on. We're going to see that that land grant is going to go to another Pacific sun. And we'll get to that when we get to him, Lord willing. Then it's going to go to another Pacific sun. We'll get to that when we, if the Lord willing. Then it's going to go up to 12 tribes. Nowhere has God ever promised, I will bless him that bless thee and curse him that curse thee. And by the way, I am going to give you a piece of real estate. And it's yours. God has never promised that. Right now, where we are in Genesis, 
to one man named Abram. No one else. This is your land. God singing, this is my land. It has nothing to do with America. When the Europeans came here, they wrongfully took the land of the Native Americans by force. Forever. And that even goes out to the new, the new earth. I will make thy seed, his children. He's a 70-year-old man right now. His wife is barren. I See right there, see? I am giving you children. Chapter 12. And nowhere do we see Abram doubting. Like, God, uh, you know, kind of impossible here. No, Abram does not say anything. He says, I'm talking about your children. And only one time Abram's going to say, well, I haven't had any children without Eliezer. We all do slide from faith every once in a while. But look at Abram. He doesn't, okay, see, I ain't got none yet. As the dust of the earth, who can count the dust? And who on earth, this says B.C. 1918, like I said, it can be right. I don't know. I'm not into the dates and years. To 1900 years here, the Old Testament. 2017 years on this side of Calvary. Almost 4,000 years. Can you imagine how many Jewish people there have been? Isaac, Jacob, 12 tribes. And then you get into the book of Chronicles and you get the book of Numbers. That's remarkable. As... The dust of the earth. So that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed also be numbered. And it's quite remarkable because I don't know, I never heard anybody say this, and maybe I shouldn't say it, but you know, I'm just throwing this in the trash can if it's not right. Maybe the, the number of Israel has to get to that number before God does anything. I don't know. Because if he knows every star. In the heavens and calls them by name I guarantee if you were to put God on on a quiz show and say God how much how, what is the count of the dust I guarantee you'd give us the numbers one second flat and it would even be a non number there's a number that man has set that you we don't even fathom then shall thy seed also be numbered then, if you can count the dust, then you can count the Jews. Forget it. Arise. Walk through the land in the length of it, in the breadth of it. For I will give it unto thee. Just start walking. Take a look. Notice it all. It's yours. He's being a nomad in his land. And, you know, he's got to go from... From this place, the water hole, he's got to move because all the cattle and all that and the, and the sheep and everything, they're going to eat it. So just, just keep, just be a nomad, Abram. And as you go from place to place, water hole to metal to water hole to metal, just look at this is your land. And your children are going to be in this land. And Abram removed his tent. He's a tent dweller. Came and dwelt in the plain of memory, memory, which is in Hebron. God already knows what the name of these places are. And built there an altar unto the Lord. So Abram's worshiping God wherever he goes. And he's trying to do right. Now, with these altars he's building, later on it's going to be a curse to the people. They're going to say, I'll just go over where I want and build an altar. There is no building. There are no walls. There are no ceilings. There is no roof. And he's serving God and doing right. Notice that. 
There's no, there's no building for God until we get to Moses, getting them out of Egypt, and we build the tabernacle then. Even that is, is it's boards, but most of it's all curtains and cloths. 